Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. It is yours truly, Crystal Leandra, and this is a paranormal podcast for those of you that are brave enough to join the circle. Today's going to be a really interesting chat with Kat. We're going to talk about uh, female cult leaders. Also, we think that um, women are smarter than men, and that's why they don't get caught as often, honestly. So we're going to kind of chat about that, so that should be kind of interesting. We have some really good ones that we found. They're probably the most notorious of them all. We're going to talk about sort of the history of why they became what they were. It's interesting because what it appears to be is that these women that are in, in charge of these cults really like control and sort of mind control, I suppose, is is the best way of putting it. Um, I know a lot of you have um, asked me about my hair. This is close to my natural hair length. Um, I'm still in the process of growing it out. I was really busy over the past few weeks trying to finish my book. It is complete. And my goal date for release, uh, what's today? Is like the 22nd or the 23rd? Today's the 22nd. So fingers crossed it will be released on all major platforms on January 25th. So I had to, I needed to not wear my extensions for a minute just to, because I was really just focused on finishing that book. It's a very large task trying to complete a novel. Um, <clears throat> some people were asking me about the book. I, and I am doing kind of like a Sabrina inspired look. I will be bringing my extensions back sometimes just for now it needed to be, you know, I needed a quick way to get dressed every day. Um, <clears throat> the novel is called Ghost Girl Diaries, The Love Diaries. So my plan eventually is to have several books. Like my one of my dreams since I was a child is to be an author. And so eventually there's going to be like probably 10 or more books released all on different topics. Um, there will be one book specifically that will be about my paranormal journey. It's pretty much complete as well. But I always knew that my the very first book that I ever wanted to drop was <clears throat> all my like love and past relationships and stuff like that. And um, <clears throat> the reason for that is I really believe that... I don't know. I think that we're here on this planet to learn about love at the end of the day, you know? So you'll see some of my worst relationships in that book. You'll see some of my best ones. Um, <clears throat> although it's based on true stories, true events, I have changed the stories slightly and names of people, you know, for identity protection, essentially. So um, I'm excited. I'm really excited. I can't believe it's done. Like, it's about 300 pages. Um, so yeah, I can't wait. It's, it's, it is based around my opinion of personal twin flame ascension, personal um, soulmates, and personal karmic partners. Um, and that includes like family and friend stories as well. So it's not all just like love, gushy, mushy stuff. So yeah, I can't wait for you guys to read. I'm really nervous. I feel like when you release a book, it's like very raw and like especially when it's a memoir and like based off of your life, it's like it's really exposing yourself, you know, like I've been very, very private about my personal life, my whole career, you know, so it'll be interesting to get, um, get your feedback on the book. Um, just remember I'm human too. And, uh, I think public figures, you, you, people get this idea that when you're a public figure, you have a perfect life and like you don't go through hard times like other people and that's very wrong. Um, the hard times are what push you to be a stronger person and the hard times are what you learn to sort of prevail by. And um, so I have definitely had my fair share of, of hard relationships. In fact, there's a, <laughs> there's a chapter in there that's called going to hell and crawling back out. So it's like quite literal, you know what I mean? So I'm going to bring in my co-host. It is Miss Kat Cormier. Where is... Hello. There How she is. Hi, Miss Kat. What are you doing, girl? You know, just chilling. <clears throat> Check out Crystal, you know. How, how's um, <laughs> how's New Hampshire, by the way? How's the weather out there? Cold AF. Um, really, really <clears throat> cold. It's about 20 degrees right now. Mm -hmm. So not too bad. If there's no wind chill, it's not horrible, but... 
Uh, it's definitely a little, a little chilly in the New England area. So <laughs> we had some snow yesterday. It's so raining in Vegas today. Ugh, oh, I love it. Ugh. Oh, yeah. So good. So yeah, Kat's going um, br- to, hopefully in the next, maybe what, two to four weeks, she's going to be braving the travel because she's dying slowly. Um, <laughs> she's been stuck in New Hampshire for a year. <laughs> so yeah, I can't believe it. I was traveling Crystal recently that I kept having all of these old uh, Snapchat memories and things like that pop up that it had been in a year or since I've been in Vegas, literally to the day. Mm-hmm. So I'm a little nostalgic. Okay, I miss Vegas. I miss Crystal. All right, I just, I miss it all. Yeah, so, so you're going to be buying a hazmat suit to get on the airlines, right? And <laughs> how did you know? I'm already looking. And then when you get off the airplane, I'm going to spray you down with Lysol and just don't swallow it. But like, you know, like, right? And then we're like, okay, everything's fine. You know, she's here. Okay, so right. I'm, I'm going to come in a crochet plague mask. Everything's good. We're ready to go. Oh, man. I just want a plague mask in general, you know? Like, just in general. I can do that. So, today's stream is good. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's, good. it's some tea. I'm actually yes. drinking tea because it's cold out. But um, where did we come up with this topic theme? I can't even remember. I don't know. I think I, it came from your brain. I think my brain's a bad For place sure. to be. Don't Don't go in there. <laughs> It's really, <laughs> and, and that's something else in my book. I refer, like I am a Taurus and, and I have a stellium in Aries, which means I have a lot of planets in Aries. So my public personality is, you know, Aries. When I get angry, I'm a Taurus. And then in my book, I refer to my brain as an Aquarius, which is a, a kind of, it's a genius in a very bad way. <laughs> it's like. Very methodical. Very oh. Thought out planned thinking of all scenarios possible mm-hmm. it's a very magical experience <laughs> thanks cat she, not every day cat says that okay some days i'm like my aquarius moon brain is like oh my god i have another idea i have another idea i have to tell you <laughs> it's so bad uh, it's so true like the differences between like sun moon and rising as well We'll, we'll have conversations and I'm like, wow, my rising sign is showing today. Or wow, my moon sign's here and balanced it, you know, as yeah. heck. It is and good that's time. so I weird that you say that, though, because I've been, like, looking at my... Ri- a lot of astrologers say that your rising sign should be really what you, like, read horoscopes on. And mm-hmm. so my rising sign is Cancer. And the only... I don't really relate to it very much. I know that sounds strange. The only thing I relate to it is if I'm having, like, a bad day and I need to ground myself, I love water. Like, I love hot tubs or, like, baths or the ocean. So I think that's the only thing I really see myself as. And, like, my my past life is, like, definitely was probably, you know, being from Atlantis and, like, around the water. So I'm assuming my rising sign has to do with that. But I don't, I don't vibe other than that with my rising sign. It's really strange. Really? Yeah, I think, you know what I think? I blame my stellium in Aries. I really think that takes me over. That's, that's where it's at. That's, that's also a at. dangerous yeah, place. It is, especially in Aries. <laughs> <laughs> I get it, because I'm an Aries oh, son. Okay. I get it. Yeah, my, my rising, I always look for, um, I'm Scorpio rising, and I always resonate with my Scorpio horoscopes, like, more than my son. Joshua like, says he's in mom, Aries. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel to you already. Oh, okay, man. long life, <laughs> hard life, and Okay, it's fine. Oh my gosh. All right. <sighs> where did we start with this? This is good. Oh, okay. So, what, where did, okay, so going back to how I thought of this idea. Yes. Kat and I have been talking about like Richard Ramirez, and we we're talking about other, you know, serial killers. And like the, the topic kind of came up as far as saying, why do females not get caught as often? Like, I I think there's probably serial killers out there that are females or even cult leaders that are females. But there's, like, if you're talking statistically speaking, it's, like, way lower. Like, like you would say 95% male, 5% female. And the first thought I had was, I truly think women, when it comes to, like, murdering, like, I mean, I'm not a murderer by all means. I have seen a lot of 
true crime orientation okay like true crime <laughs> and i told cat on the phone the other day i was like look i'm not gonna kill anybody but i'm just saying i feel like i've seen so much true crime that if it ever happened i would know what i was what doing I <laughs> like literally <laughs> but that so that goes into like actual females like that do do to true crime like for real or like you know cult leaders I think they're very, like, they think it out. They're very methodical, like, before they plan things. And I think they execute. And I think that's why they don't get caught. Because they're still out there <laughs> roaming around. Like, why am I laughing? Is it, like, am I that dark? Like, I think I'm really embodying the Sabrina. Because I feel like since my hair has been shorter, like, I just have been laughing more and more about knowing that females just really, truly hide out. And it is crazy because, like, we'll go through this list with you guys. And um, I'm still laughing. I'm sorry. Um, because these women, like, you look at the men that get, you know, in trouble, like John Wayne Gacy or BTK, like, whoever you want to talk about. And they get, like, sentenced immediately, like, 100 years to life. Yeah. You're going to be put down, like, lethal injection. And then with women, they're like, oh, we'll give you 10 years. And if you have good behavior, we'll let you out. Yeah, you may have killed 17 people, but... You're a girl, so you'll you'll like do better next time. Like it's so it's you know, weird. We're here for you. We're here for you. Yeah, it is very strange. And and on that side, that's where my you know, I do always say like, yes, I'm a feminist and I am, but there's gotta be a balance because with that I don't think it's fair. You know what I mean? Like I don't think because just because you're a female, the judge is giving you, you know, a free ticket out of here for murdering seventeen people. Like I don't agree with that at all. But it does show I mean, you that it's the, the justice system does favor not only like we've talked about with white privilege, but also female privilege. And that's not fair, honestly. Like, if not, you've done the crime of, of destroying somebody's skull and murdering somebody, 17 people, and you need to you go away, boo-boo. Like, there's not enough time for you to find Jesus, ho. You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. straight up. You got some issues to sort out in jail. In jail. Okay. Forever. Forever. You can go there for like ever. Just stay there. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my gosh, I can't. So what did you think when I sent you this list of female cult leaders? Like I okay, I'm just gonna say we only picked the most notorious, but really theoretically the list is very short, isn't it? Yeah, it's like ten people. You would have thought it would have been more. And then you do more research and you just can't find it. And it's like, wow. Yeah, I was telling Crystal um, when I was doing like my side of the research um, for, the, for the stream that it was actually really difficult for me to find any background info on these women and their life, like their early on life. I feel like with men and their serial killer profiles or their cult profiles or whatever, there's like a whole backstory on like where they were born, the address they were born at, you know, mm -hmm. like their abuse abuse situation. Right. And you just can't find that with the women in, mm. in this group. It's very strange. So I'm I'm sure it's not like that for all of them, but I just found it very interesting that there was really no context within deep deep context with the background. Well, it is because if you do look at people like you know Richard Ramirez. I mean, he was, wasn't he, like, molested or something? Like, a lot of the male serial kiss, like, the serial killers have, like, child molestation, like, in their youth, which is horrifying and sad. And it's almost like they're, they, like, build these, like, shadow selves to keep themselves protected. And then at some point, they just explode. Um, some point, they yeah. just explode, and they don't know what to do with it or, or or how to express it or, or get help or whatever you want to say. So then they start sort of reenacting the murders out on other people. And, like, it's just sad. Or you even have, like, John Wayne Gacy who said, like, he thought he was gay most of his life and he didn't feel like he could express himself. So he ends up, like, abducting little boys and, like, reenacting his fantasies on them. So it, like, the... the the psychoanalysis, like, psychology side of the serial killer cult leader thing is... I don't, do you find it fascinating? I find it fascinating. I think it's interesting to see the parallels in how their background has an impact on their current state. Like, or, like, how, how their background from a child 
kind of interpreted their way into these acts. Because we always say, for example, like the way that we're treated is usually a mirror of how that person feels. It usually has nothing to do with us, mm -hmm. per se. And I feel like that rings true with a lot of these serial killers, men or women, right. um, you know, or cult leaders. You know, there's something wrong that's not clicking right because especially like with one of, one of the women that we're going to talk about, there's always a need for control mm -hmm. in any serial killer, in any type of cult. And that always stems from some type of abuse situation. They didn't, they felt out of control mm -hmm. as children. Mm -hmm. And in order for them to feel like they were gaining some form of control, they had to put that onto others. So right. not excusing it by any means, but it is just fact that that is what happens. Right. I love so, it. I actually wanted yeah. to go to school to be a psycho, like a criminal psychologist. I had, um, I had a client that was a criminal psychologist uh, when I was a cosmetologist. And I was mm -hmm. early, like, because I mean, I got my cosmetology license when I was like 18. And I think this mm. client came into my life when I was like 19 or 20. And uh, she worked for the federal government and she traveled the United States. And she was only called in for like major, major criminal cases. So for example, I mean, she wasn't on like any famous ones we knew of our time, but like if John Wayne Gacy was arrested, she would have been called in as his criminal psychologist. And she wow. would, basically she's hired to like pick their brain to figure out like what makes you click this way. And she made ridiculous money, like ridiculous money, because she worked for, she was like a government contractor. And I remember at the time I was 19, 20, and I was wanting to go back to college, but I didn't know for what. I just knew I wanted my degree. And she would fly in to see me, literally. Like, she lived in Texas, but literally, like, traveled all over the world. So she literally flew into Colorado just to see me. And I really seriously at that point had considered going into criminal psychology because it is about the crime documentary. It is about understanding their psyche. It is about understanding, like... Personally, I could never, ever, like, I, I have a problem killing spiders. You know what I mean? Like, in no. fact, Kat's been on the phone with me when I've caught a spider in a jar and I put it outside. Like, I can't kill things. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, no, 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 we can't kill the spider. Like, we just put it outside. Just put it outside. Unless it's, like, one of those big ones from Australia. Like, that's that's not going to happen. Like, if, if that happened, I'd move out. No. I'd burn my house down. But. No, Fire torch. <laughs> Fire torch. No. But no. it I'm is. Good. It's, Not those camel spiders, okay? What mm -hmm. makes a human being capable of, like, severely, you know, mutilating another human being or an animal or a thing? Like, that is so, like, the actual process of it is so foreign to me. And it's like, no wonder we in paranormal experience the aftermath of the, quote, stain of it replaying over and over again because the trauma involved the process involved like even when Elfie and I were talking about the Black Dahlia the process of dismembering her is just and the time and the patience and not only that the knowledge is just the strangest thing to me that somebody's brain could work in that way um and I don't think all serial killers, like a lot of people, like, oh, that's a demon. Like a demon, then then the demon dies, and that's like what, what becomes like interacting with demons on this planet. Not necessarily. I think mental health is, is another problem. There's I've, I've learned a lot about bipolar, and I think I have a theory on some serial killers, not all. And, and that does not mean if you're bipolar, you're a serial killer. I'm not saying that either. But there is something that they have that's called a manic episode, and I have witnessed manic episodes, and I they black out. So I and sometimes these serial killers like Ted Bundy, they're like I don't remember it happening, and he was like I feel like someone else is living in my head. So the psyche behind it is like it's I don't think it's just like demonic. I don't think it's just possession. I think it's also a mental health issue. But then I do think you have just really bad eggs. I think Richard Ramirez. Yes, it's sad he was abused. But the way he, like, killed people and, like, stomped them to death and, like, the anger that that takes to do that to a person, I just think there's just, there's things as bad eggs. I think Hitler was just a really yeah. bad egg, you know? Like, I just think there's bad eggs. 
and they have to go home and heal from what they did but i think most of the time those energies don't want to go home they don't want to meet their maker because they're afraid to find out what happens to me when i go meet my maker like what what are they going to do to me yeah it's really interesting when i watched the night stalker um documentary without getting too into detail of it um it, it, he was really dark like mm-hmm. his eyes i've never seen them that dark black mm-hmm. on a serial killer before like e- evil evil but you know going back to the criminal psychology of these people um it's really interesting because in the night stalker documentary you know a lot of the police um you know chief of police especially that was in, in involved in the case wanted to literally sit down one-on-one with him and pick you know, Ramirez's brain Mm -hmm. to figure out why and how, like what, because I swear, and I haven't heard this, so I don't know if it's accurate or not, but I think they do that. And the reason why you want to know about their backstory and why they do the things they do is because there are similarities in some of these killings. Oh yeah. And I think that's what helps them track them easier Mm -hmm. is if it's very similar to the last three that had a very similar background or family history, then you'll be able to find him quicker. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or her quicker, whoever it is. Exactly. So, Well, that was like Ted Bundy. I mean, they sat down with Ted Bundy in Florida when he was on, you know, death row waiting to die. And the interesting thing with Ted Bundy is he actually talked in like third person where he wouldn't say, well, if, if I were to do it, well, I mean, you know, like, so he literally talked like he didn't say it was me that did it. He talked in third person, but he also claimed that he wasn't present during the murders. He didn't remember it happening. He knew it was him. And then he would say, well, I think I'm possessed. I don't think he was possessed. I think he had severe, like, I think he had undiagnosed mental illness. I think it was possibly manic episodes that he was going through. And he'd get these huge urges of rage where he just didn't, he'd black out, wouldn't remember murdering these people and, and even the dismembering process. So I'm, it is just really interesting how the police can use utilize people like Ted Bundy. That's why they interviewed him. Same with Richard Ramirez to try to prevent it happening in the future. But it is interesting because you even look at other things like you have ancestry DNA involved now where other murderers or even just people that have committed crimes, like there was that serial rapist, you remember in California that had been on the loose for like 30 or 40 years and they were finally able to connect him through DNA from his ancestors and like other family members on ancestry DNA. So, and I know that there's yeah. another discussion that comes on that with like privacy laws and stuff like that. I don't really want to get into that discussion because, you know, I had a friend that used to work with us and she used to say, well, my parents, you know, they don't want me to get the ancestry DNA because they're afraid like the government's going to track us. First of all, we're already being tracked. Second of all, you have nothing to hide if you haven't murdered somebody. <laughs> Like, literally, like, what are you hiding from? Have you murdered somebody? And if your family member murdered someone, like, they should probably be, like, you know, maybe go to jail for murdering people, you know, like, just a suggestion. Just a suggestion, maybe they're not safe in society, but that's just mean, you know what I mean? So, it's it's interesting what, how much today's day and age with, like, science and stuff has changed things. I'm just like super fascinated by the whole thing. So, and the women aspect, I feel like, have you ever heard anybody even talk about like female serial killers or like, I feel like this topic just isn't really brought up. No. It's almost like like it's frowned upon because it's like they're women and like, you know, they had a hard life or like they went, and it's like, no, bitch, like he, she killed some people too. Like she tortured people too. She still killed people. Like, yeah, exactly. she doesn't get a, exactly. get a get off the hook case for this, okay? For murdering 17 people. So, oh I want to talk about the first she's one. Because she's my favorite okay, one. I know, and not, oh, that sounds dark. One? That sounds dark. She's my favorite serial killer. That's like such a true crime person to say. Um, but really, this there's a woman named Anne um, Hamilton. Um, and she was like, she died June 13th of 2019. So honestly, we just missed her, damn it. We could have gotten an interview in. Just oh missed God. her. <laughs> like, shoot. Um, oh, you, Crystal. I Darn it. So she was <laughs> out of it. Australia, okay? And the reason this one in particular fascinated me, um, she, okay, Anne was a cult leader for this cult in Australia. And... I mean, it was, like, for 30 years, right, or something like that. It was, like, 
long it says time. that they started like 1968 to 1975 is when it was most predominant. 70s and 80s was really big. So she yeah. basically said that she was the verbatim reincarnation of Jesus Christ. Join the Sorry. list. Like, I feel like <laughs> everybody thinks that. Like, literally, like, everybody, like, that's like everyone's goal. It's like, oh, I'm born again in Jesus Christ. I'm Jesus. But that's how. She- <laughs> God, I can't. Like, literally. <laughs> that's, why. It's, that's pretty much what she did, and they bought it. I, I know. Mean, how could you'd have to really be, beautiful. like, serious and sell yourself to be like, yes, guys, I am holier than thou. And um, how do you drop that conversation on somebody? By the way, I'm Jesus. Anyways, so <laughs> I just got back to this planet, and uh, what's going on? <laughs> like, literally, oh it's God. so ridiculous. It's it's sad, yeah. though, because I think the people that follow cult leaders in particular, like, I've studied the Manson family, like, a lot and, and other ones as well. But I feel like um, when you're involved with a cult, um, they tend to find, like, the weakest people. And the people that they find that want to be involved seem to have really broken homes. And they feel like they don't have a place in this world or, you know, in society and they finally feel like they've found that in this like cult situation. So something that is interesting regarding this stream as well is when you guys um, get the book, if you decide to get my book, that'll come out hopefully in a couple of days. Um, my ex was involved in a cult and I talk about it in, over the course of a couple of chapters. And I think why it's so interesting for me is it's something you don't think you'll ever know someone involved with it, you know? Like, you're like, oh, there's a cult. Oh, Manson, he's an idiot. Oh, da-da-da. Like, oh, Heaven's Gate. Yeah, they all, like, drink, punch, and died or whatever. Like, what a bunch of idiots. But then, like, you actually have somebody in your life that, like, involves themselves in it. And you're like, how did that happen? How did that happen? You know what I mean? Like, so it'll be interesting to get your feedback from you guys on on what I experienced with this. But Mm -hmm. this Anne girl basically starts inquiring, like, members into this cult. What did she call the cult, by the way? What was it called? Do you even remember? Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, They lived in a rural area. I know that. So when these adults would come in, they would bring their children, once again, coming from, like, broken homes or whatever, single parents. And Anne would require that the children bleach their hair. So they, at the time, like, this is an old term, but they called them, like, toeheads. Toehead is, like, a slang term for being, like, bleach, bleach blonde hair. And she would Mm -hmm. force all of the children to bleach their hair, and they all looked like little creepy blonde headed demon things you know like they all looked alike and that was what she wanted which was the cult to like look uniform i think eventually that's ended up like what they were like they were tipped off by looking so strange and like looking like you know like a cult that somebody tipped them off but she would bleach these this this these children's hair and basically like under the name of god and like jesus christ that like you know to follow and to serve it's interesting. Why are cults always in fear or like using the fear of religious intimidation? Have you noticed that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, it's organized religion. Well, and you could and even argue that tactic. you could even argue that some organized religion is similar, can't you? Oh yeah, one hundred percent. It's a form of control. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you could know? you could say the even. Facts. You know, Scientology is, is behind that as well. And you could even mm-hmm. say some Catholicism, Catholic, is behind that as well. I mean, you could even look at new uprisings of Christianity that we've been experiencing for the past four years that kind of look that way as well. Definitely. So it's interesting Definitely. how they take, like, this sort of fear of, um, what was that noise? Yeah, your mic is, like, cutting in and out. Stand by for one That's second. Weird. Just one second, guys.
Anyway, <laughs> okay, nothing's in here. Let me move my they backdrop called, back. Like, she, Anne called them the family. The fam. Why is it always they're, the family? They're just known as the family, and she actually falsified like birth certificates with these children that like she would adopt. Right. And then like cult captive. And that really was strange. Whoops. Really strange. Are you okay? That was. It was. There was like voice, and then it, it sounded like somebody came in the room, and I wasn't sure what was going on. So anyway. Hmm. <sighs> Weird. Okay. Um. So, oh, God, I'm sorry, it threw me off, because I was like, literally, I was like, is somebody, every time I stream, it never, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Yeah, if she it's was a, having, we were having activity, too, before we went on. And I just saged, like, literally a couple days ago. Anyway, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, I was literally, it sounded like somebody was going through my makeup behind me. Yeah, and I and didn't, I, heard a, a I didn't want to, like... I, don't, I mean, it's kind of messy back there. Like, you don't want to see it. That's why I, like, shut the, like, screen off for a second. Like, and because I was like, yeah. who, who's going through my makeup? Like, what's, why? Like, who, what's going on? I, I mean, I have people that, like, help me with my live stream here, like, when I'm going live. So I was like, maybe somebody's moving something around. Maybe they're, they're moving the wiring. And I go back there and there's nothing. I'm like, anyways. Oh, and aren't you dead? Girl, are you in here? Uh, so weird. Thank you for the bits, Laura. Okay, so let's go back. Want some so makeup? once once again, she thinks she's like Jesus Christ in the flesh. Um, oh, that's right. She does have. She calls it the family. The family. Mm. Um, she obtained these children and basically like started adopting them to herself and like within this culty thing they were doing. And they were, they like knew people, like doctors, lawyers, and stuff that were doing shady shit, basically, right? I mean, they were sort of helping the situation, which, which means she had some money to be able yeah. to do this because yeah. she was probably paying them off because money talks. And so they were getting these like illegal adoptions going on too to like grow the cult. And the kids, it, I mean, they raged from like literally two years old all the way up to, like, in their preteens, right? 13, 14 years old. And mm -hmm. she would choose which one was basically going to be abused for that day or that week or that month. They'd be tied up. They'd be put in cages. They'd be malnourished. She'd starve them to death. She would abuse them. She would hurt them. She would drug the children with LSD. A, a two-year-old? Oh, really? And in the name yeah. of Jesus, are you serious? Like, no, oh my. Not. And she and she would leave them in a dark room, like <sighs> by themselves, with the light, like with the lights off. And then she would just come in while they're tripping on LSD. And of course, that would startle a child, you know. Well, and who so, knows if she gave them so much where they were like practically overdosing as well. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. In the dark, you imagine, like, and doesn't LSD, like, it's a hallucinogenic, so it makes you, like, see shit, right? And you're in yeah. the dark. I mean, I'm sure it's, like, your mind starts tripping out, like, monsters and everything. Like, what a mind F for an oh infant. Oh, my God. She, she gave them diazepam, too. God, that's, like, Valium, so that makes them really, like, tired and sleepy, and it makes your muscles go sort of weak. That's, like, wow. prescribed for anxiety is what it's prescribed for. Um, but that wasn't it. There were a lot of other drugs that she would experiment on giving them. It, it kind of reminded me concentration camp vibes a little bit, where she wanted to see how the children would react on different drugs, different drugs mixed, different dosages, and then she would, like, cats that keep them in an area... And then she'd starve him and say, like, oh, well, Jesus says that you, like, you shouldn't eat. Like, you need to fast for, like, three weeks. And they would literally just start slowly starving, no water or anything. I'm shocked. There wasn't any deaths, though, from what I had saw. No, just a lot of abuse. And there was one um, girl, her name is Sarah, and she had the last name of Hamilton Byrne. Yeah, she gave them all the same name. Then. They all had the Hamilton Byrne name, right? Yeah, yeah, Ew. and that's where they falsified the birth the documents. Creepy. Because they knew people to bypass, like, the whole process, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um... Sarah was expelled from the adoptive mother um, at some point during that time. But she, uh, Sarah talks about how um, 
there was this man named Muk Mukananda, Muk Muktananda, um, and they would give a private audience once a week to um, the group, kind of like sermon style, talking about scripture and things like that in the midst of like these weird abusive things happening in the household. And um, he had done a test on the children saying that um, the family should live with him in India like go back to India and the kids were all really excited because they thought this was a man that they could trust. And um, the mother, um, Anne, right? Is that her name? Yeah. Yeah. She was in the other room and punished them all because they made the wrong decision. So, so it's like she set them up to fail. She right, did well, like psychological stuff. Psycho it was kind of like, when I was reading through this, an easy way to describe it is, do you guys remember the movie Saw, like the Saw series? And they would basically have to make a choice, like, live or die, or do this or die, or, like, you know, cut your foot off, or, like, live, or whatever. She basically gave them ultimatums like that, except they were children. Now, nobody died in the end, like in the movie Saw, but it was, like, psychological torment that she put these kids through. And if they, quote, failed their tests, that's when, like, they would be chosen for abuse, depending on who failed the worst. And she'd, like, starve him, like I said, abuse, give him LSD, um, all these strange person. Once again, all about control, all about manipulation, mind control, abuse. And it's she wanted them to fail. She wanted them to she fail did. so that she could torture them. And then she turned the table and said, oh, it's your fault. You failed. You didn't answer this correctly. So now I'm going to torture you, but it's your fault I'm torturing you. So, like, yeah. I can't even imagine growing up with that. How do you have a normal life after that? You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's like the most extreme form of gaslighting. Woo. Because I can only imagine if they're seeing this man who's very free and, you know, free will and all of that and preaching to them whatever and saying, come back with me to India to have freedom. Of course, the kids are going to say, yeah, take me with you. Exactly. Because there's something weird going on. Right. You know, um, but then that but then she would just abuse them. And and I found it actually really interesting why Anne would would um, shun Sarah or, you know, reject Sarah, expel her because Sarah was the one that ended up bringing the private investigators to the house saying right. there's something wrong with this woman. Y'all need to check it out. Yep. So she was sort of the whistleblower. Thank God. So now once again, you're yeah. talking about Australia. If you're like thinking, how could this have gone on for so long? You're talking about Australia. They're living yeah. in this like country bumpkin area of nothingness, like nothing area. And you look at Australia and it's a huge piece of land but like most of it's unoccupied most of it is like wildlife still unless you're in the major cities so they knew sort of where to build their what do you call it um compound like that's that's a typical thing for a cult right is to have a compound mm -hmm. and they knew how to hide out and hide from people and not make it look obvious that like something weird was going on. But yes, there was one girl named Sarah and she was the whistleblower and she essentially got older. She was quote expelled from the like cult. And when she was released, she went to the police, told the police what was going on, said, I think something's wrong with this woman. There's other children involved. Like the abuse that goes on is unbelievable. So once again, was there a mistake made on the part of Anne? That wasn't very smart. She should have known better when you release somebody they're going to say something but she may have also thought that her psychological tactics had been so worked yeah powerful that she was she was thinking oh well she's gonna leave and she's not gonna say anything she wouldn't dare say something because she knows i would you know torture her or whatever her. Mm -hmm. so it's almost mm -hmm. this also attitude for the Anne, which is the woman that's in charge of the cult is this attitude of i'm Invincible, I am Jesus Christ in the f in the flesh. I nobody can stop me, not even the law, not even a whistleblower type of thing. And so it is interesting. It it really is interesting how these these cult leaders sort of function. So this girl was expelled from um, from the cult in 1987, and then the girl named Sarah. Hamilton went to the police. The police basically made a bust. They removed all of the children in 1990, 1987. 
Um, Sarah, this was interesting too. So she's the girl that was the whistleblower. She ended up going on and studied medicine and she became a doctor. Like that had to have, do it. How do you do that though? Like you are abused and like in a cult your entire youth. Clearly she'd been rebelling for a while, but she'd gone she'd endured massive abuse and she literally chose to turn her life around. Like wow. It's huge. She's probably an old soul. Oh yeah, for she'd have she to be. What was going on from the start? I would assume too. She was the oldest. She was probably looking after the children. I'm sure. So she might have been their only real saving grace. Mm-hmm. Not, well, I think in that sad. if you were in that position, uh, it, personally, you would think that if you're being abused and you've been abused and you're sort of imprisoned in this cult society, you're going to assume that if you rebel against the cult leader, who's Anne, who Anne hated her the most, you're going to rebel and they're going to kill you. So she was very brave to be like, I don't care if they kill me. I'm still going to rebel. I don't agree with I don't agree with what's going on. I don't agree with this. And instead they're like, we're just expelling you from the cult. You have to leave like you're homeless. You're on your own. And she's like, OK, bitch, I'm going to turn you in. I'm going to get all these kids safe. And that was also a brave move because she may have been in fear in her head that if she turned her in and nothing happened, she would also still be murdered at some point. So, like, the bravery that comes in from standing up, doing the right thing, even if you're alone, like, that's a huge lesson, I think, to anybody that reads about this stuff, is, like, even if you're alone and standing up doing the right thing, you are doing the right thing, even if you're by yourself, 100%. But it is hard. And your gut instinct, especially with that with the psychological aspect of mm-hmm. things. Because I, I almost wonder if people rebelled or if Sarah rebelled that she was just given LSD. You know what I mean? To just shut her up. Shut up. And hopefully, really well, crazy and once about. again, if you're giving infants, children who are not being prescribed this medication for like proper reasons, who knows what that could do to your memory? Maybe she was trying to find a combination of drugs where they would forget what happened earlier. Oh, like am- yeah, amnesia like an amnesia type of thing or something. Because, yep. like the list, guys, like you can look it up. I there's so many mm-hmm. drugs that they were giving her. I don't even know what some of them are. I didn't research all of them. Obviously, I, what I think was happening is the adults were given the drugs by you know antipsychotics. You have everything. You also have illegal drugs as well, but other medications that are prescribed. And then the adults would bring them home and give them to Anne. It was almost like she probably was making them get the prescriptions. And then she was basically giving these the children these, like, weird cocktails. And it's just, it's yeah. horrific, once again, to think that an adult could be that. Two things I hate, like, obviously I can't stand human sacrifice. I hate children being hurt, and I cannot stand animals being hurt. Like, right. it, 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 my psyche does not, like, how could, how, how? sacrifices how how do these people do how how an innocent child like i'm not saying not to like oh well if you're gonna kill somebody just don't do it to a kid or an animal like you shouldn't kill anybody period you know what i'm saying but like mm-hmm. little kid who's like a empty sponge that's just like just got to planet earth to like become something and like but kill- children are also easily manipulate you know manipulated and you can take them over on control easier so that's a reason that these people even like john wayne gacy that's why they choose children because they're they're easier to take over and it's sick that's so sad so now 2009 rolls around and two kids from this like cult step up and say i'm suing Anne for psychological torment and they sued her for cruel and inhuman treatment Um, and other people got involved in it too. Like they were saying they were freezing overnight. They were being forced to live in a shed. They were being forced to take drugs and medications. They were starved. They were given insufficient food and these people. Okay. So Anne at the end of her day was, was worth $50 million as a cult leader. And these people that sued her from the court system compensated these victims that were in the cult $250,000 are you effing kidding me and she's worth $50 million the hell is wrong with our court system it's messed up it's messed up (sighs) and I'm just shocked that she didn't really serve any time 
And she didn't serve any time. She didn't. They took the kids, which thank God. Thank God they took the kids. But Jesus. I mean, I don't even know. I'm just going to stop there because it's just, I could keep going. And it just doesn't matter. Go down a dark rabbit hole with that one. Yeah. (sighs) She was bad. She was just bad. She's just bad. Evil, evil person. Okay, so the next one. um, Clementine uh, Bar- Barnabet? Is that how you pronounce her name? B A R N B E T? Barnabet? Barnabet. Barnabet, maybe? Barnabet, yes. Barnabet. Um, she's definitely dead, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's like, she'd be, she'd be like 127 today or something. She's, she's definitely like dead. I mean, maybe. Like, she practiced voodoo, so she could be walking around <laughs> somewhere out there. If somebody introduced themselves as Clementine Barnabet, run. Like, run like a mofo because, like, she's 127. Literally. Yeah. It's 2021. You just never know. It could be a zombie apocalypse, you know? Like, we've seen it all at this point, you know? Pandemic, voodoo queens. Um, so she was, she was quote called the voodoo, um, the voodoo murderer. Um, she was, she was in charge of the voodoo murders. And I, I thought it was really interesting. She was considered, this was obviously in the early 1900s when this happened, but she was considered the first black woman that was not only like a cult leader, but also a sort of serial killer. She was considered the first female African-American serial killer in the United States out of Louisiana. Crazy. I'm not sure if that's a proud um, title, but... Um, I mean, up, some of her, saying. oh, her, you guys, I just want you to, this is, we're going to put a warning up now that, um, this one's a little gruesome. So if you can't handle explicit. it with the, with the tum-tum, there's some explicit material. You know what I'm saying? Block your ears. Do you want to start it? Okay. Uh, from which one? All right. So, um, she became the leader of, um, this voodoo cult called the Church of Sacrifice, which gained like a pretty big following in its time. Um, Essentially, the Church of Sacrifice would sacrifice people in order to show their devotion to their high priestess of the church. Wow. And before they would go and, um, you know, murder people, they would be given these um, conjure bags, which is a lot like hoodoo magic. So voodoo and hoodoo are similar but different Mm -hmm. and um they said that if they wore um, the high priestess would say that if you wore the conjure bag while doing this act of violence um that you would have supernatural powers and you would be virtually undetectable to authorities so people that might be around here's the way when i was reading this this is how i sort of envisioned it to make it sound like it makes sense you think of Mm -hmm. the little mermaid and you think of ursula and you think that she has the conch around her neck while she takes the voice of Ariel, like the voices in the conch. I sort of think mm-hmm. of it as that. It's, it's sort of like witch magic where you you have this, this, you know, bag around your neck or where, however they would wear it or in their pocket. And I, to me, it sounds like they feel like, um, yes, they had supernatural powers, but it was because of like a piece of their soul going into this sort of like magic bag is sort of how I thought of it. So, cause I mean, yeah. the, you know, the little mermaid, the, the evil queen is on the edge of being a little hoodoo voodoo with some of the spells that are in that. Um, just so you guys know. 100%. Yeah. Like, especially the conch, like that's a big thing of like trapping and trapping things into things and then wearing them as a trophy. That's very like hoodoo voodoo y. Um, which is just put okay, men in jars. That's all. We just put men in jars and we're done. Then we <laughs> bury it. And then bye. You're in the backyard forever. See ya. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Speaking of that, Christina um, Ricci's husband was beating her. Yeah, that was messed up. He needs that to go in a jar crazy. immediately. Someone needs to put him in a jar because nobody's going to mess with my Wednesday Adams. You know what I'm saying? Like, that really pissed me off. She was granted a restraining order because of it. Anyway, I'm sorry. I went on a tangent. I'm a, I'm a huge Christina Ricci fan, okay? She has inspired my dark Wednesday Adams side. Anyways, back to the Church of Sacrifice. We're going to go and put someone in a jar, right? We'll, we'll give you name and place. It's fine. Oh, my God. We're yeah, sick. messed it up. All right. It's messed up. Church sacrifice. So, conjure bags. Yeah. So the preaching was one thing. Wow. Like she was preaching 
okay. But her followers ended up killing 40 people. 40 uh, people? Total, Holy sure, shit. Yeah. With an axe. Uh, um, what? So, yeah. <laughs> so it's fine. <laughs> it's everything great. Why um, is everybody so, in Louisiana killing each other with axes? Same with the axe man? Like, yeah, what's what going on? What, what is the what deal? Is the, um, what was the other one? Madame? The axe else. man. Oh, oh yeah, Madame. Name? Yeah, that one lady that. She, well, I don't know. She used. Ma- she didn't use axes, though. She, like, she put. She pushed people off of roofs. Oh, right. Which is also, right. like, why? Like, that's a that's Still a lot of that. energy. Like, I'm going to murder someone on a roof. Why? Like, that? you have to walk all the way to the roof. It's Who's amazing. got the energy for that? Okay. I need a ladder. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> why do I keep saying that? This is such a horrible time to say that again. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Get your life together. Gosh. <laughs> Okay, so apparently as well, these followers believe that immortality could be gained by making these human sacrifices. So that was what the church of sacrifice was, essentially. Yeah. And once again, talk um, about not trying to hide that from the authorities. Like, oh, what's your church called? Um, the church of sacrifice. <laughs> really? Like, wow, no shame in, like, trying to hide it at all whatsoever oh. now. Mm-mm. Messed up, man. I keep feeling like there's something on my face. Uh oh. Like I keep feeling like spider webby. Like a, like wispy. Uh oh. Like a. That so means the ghost is at your right. house today, ho. Not at my house. Right. Okay. Just don't touch my bearded dragon. We'll be fine. <laughs> um. So, uh, should I go into the accounts? Uh, you mean like with all these horrible oh, murders oh. that happened? Ooh, that was weird. What? Crystal. What? Okay, you're there. I I, I completely lost you. Can you see me? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay. Look, okay, voodoo so queen. Okay, I'm just going to need you to step off my stream for a minute, okay? Can we just get through this, please? I appreciate it. 1911. Um, a police officer responded to an urgent phone call that something terrible had taken place at 605 Western Avenue, which is in also Louisiana. Um, when the officer arrived to the house, they found three occupants, a man, a woman, and a small boy, each lying in a bed with their skulls split open. Why? It's not cute. It's not cute. They got uh, an empath that my head hurts now. The bed was completely Fine. drenched in blood. There were bloody footprints that were leaving out of the doorway. There was speckled blood on the floor. The doors were locked, indicating the killer had come through a window and had murdered the family while they slept. Sort of like the axe murderer. Um, or was that Velisca Axe House? Did they Were they axe? I can't remember. Um, there was a yes. bucket of blood in one corner, and there was um, at the head of the bed... The bodies um, stood basically the bloodied axe on the floor. So they used one axe to split everybody's heads open one at a time. Um, Nobody could figure out what was going on. But um, April 5th of 1912, so this is about a year later, um, Clementine, who was basically the the voodoo queen running this cult, um, made a confession admitting that she had actually murdered 17 and claiming that she had bought a voodoo charm to protect her um, from being in trouble or, like, you know, incarcerated by the police from committing the crimes. Um, and then all of a sudden, of course, it drew a lot of attention in media, which sounds like it would have it, it definitely at that time as well, like having that many murders at once. Um, she also had disguised herself as a man to become unnoticed at night. Um, there was newspaper outlets and media that obviously had reported on this and they declared that um, she had killed the children because she did not wish to leave them as orphans in the world. So her intention was to actually murder the adults, but she didn't want to leave them as orphans. So she went ahead and knocked the kids off for good luck because she's really sick. Um, nobody really knew the... the they say they don't know the motives of motives of her crimes. Okay, she's in hoodoo and voodoo. They're like like anything, guys. Like, and we've never done that. Would be a good stream, cat. We should talk about the differences of hoodoo and voodoo. That'd be a good one. Um, yeah, I'm writing it down. Like anything, like same with witchcraft, cat. And I've talked about witchcraft a lot. If you are a paranormal investigator and you ghost hunt, you are participating in necromancy, which is witchcraft. 
And, and that shocks people, and I still don't understand why. Because, like, in your brain, you have been taught witchcraft is bad. Oh, Christianity, and God said not to do it, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, like, I don't know. Like, God's not yeah. here to chat about it right now. Like, I think you should just live your life and do what you want to do. And it's just crazy, because, like, anything, and that includes religion, there is always good and there is always bad. And the same thing goes with witchcraft, with Christianity, with Catholicism, with hoodoo and voodoo probably even Scientology there's probably good things to things there's good side to it and then there's a bad side to it and it just depends on which side of the spectrum you fall in which is like with witchcraft we've talked about that there is such thing as um, white magic gray magic and black magic I mean you can get in between with like green magic but we're not going to go there but obviously if you're talking about white gray black magic black magic is the darker stuff you can get into even like demonic stuff or Satanism or satanic worship. And then the the white side, obviously, if you're a white witch, you're not. Also, if you practice blowing your candles out on your birthday, you are practicing witchcraft. Do you celebrate Christmas? Do you have a Christmas tree and give Christmas presents out? Oh, guess what? You're practicing paganism. You're practicing witchcraft. Like, people don't realize the basis of most everything that we do on planet earth is based off of witchcraft because it's so old the, the tradition is so old it's before christianity was even a thing and um but you know going back to the hoodoo voodoo side of things uh, investigators were saying oh we don't really know what her motives were for the crimes because she was practicing voodoo the dark side of voodoo is literally bloodletting and collecting blood specimens because you need bone specimens hair and blood in order to like create and do like the dark rituals yep so that is why she was murdering people she was collecting these not i mean sometimes they do trophies but not really as much like for her to just go in and clock people over the head i don't think it had anything to do with like her wanting to collect things i think she was literally using human sacrifices and she was needing specimens to do spells i mean what do you think about it I agree. Yeah. I agree. But now this happened in the early 1900s, and obviously, you know, you're going to have police and investigators. They're not going to have a clue what hoodoo or voodoo is. Right. So, of course, they're going to be like, I don't know what she's doing. Um, so she confessed to 17. Her congregation confessed to 40 murders. Claiming right. that she was basically immune to being prosecuted because of her, her voodoo charms. Um, that she, like, kept around her neck or whatever. Um, she did end up having to hire defense attorneys. Um, they claimed that she was, she was sane. Or, no, wait, she was insane. Insane, yeah. But she stood trial and she was sentenced to life at the age of 19. Wow, that's a young cult leader, 19. Like, so that means she started even a few years, like, prior to that. So, once again... Now, in her case, do I think people were following her because they found, you know, they were, like, lost souls? Possibly. But I think in the case of something like spell work, she probably just found other people, especially in Louisiana, that were, like, like-minded. I mean, hoodoo and voodoo is still very prominent today in the South. Like, very prominent. Um, and yeah. then hoodoo originated from Haiti, right? And then voodoo originated from Africa. So, and there's still people that, that practice that ritually, like, to this day. Once again, you're not going to hear about the dark magic side of it because they don't want people to know about it. Yet, that's right. what people are afraid of. But, you know, once again, do I think all hoodoo and voodoo is bad? No. I can say, I can admit there is an egg spell that Kat and I do every once in a while. And it is, is it hoodoo or voodoo? Once it's hoodoo. Month. Is it hoodoo? It's think, hoodoo. It's, it's hoodoo, hoodoo based. So you take an mm -hmm. egg and you use it. It's a it's a process. I'm not going to go into it now. But you take an egg, and it basically removes negative energy from like your body and your surroundings. And then you crack the egg to see what like the yolk looks like inside of water, and that will show you if you need to do another egg spell like two or three more times to get rid of any negative energy. It can be like people sending you bad vibes it can be people cursing you all that kind of thing so yeah cat and i do participate in that once a month um and mm -hmm. i think it works i think it works so not it all does. hoodoo and voodoo is i'm gonna go sacrifice a lamb i'd rather you don't 
Can you not? I'll take the lamb. I don't know where I'm going to put it in Vegas, but I'll take the lamb. I'll take it for yarn. A cat just wants a llama. You just want a llama, yeah. like, for God's sake. Oh, cat. my gosh. Side side note, I drove by an alpaca farm the other day, and I almost <laughs> cried. That was my story. The end. Oh, my God. Cat wants to own an alpaca. <laughs> I just want a black alpaca. True story. so cute. True story. In fact, <laughs> she came when she drove across country... She oh saw an God. emu, and she didn't drop that for, like, a year. I finally haven't heard about that for a while. <laughs> oh, my God. I, tell, I even searched them. What, emu? I searched to see if there was an emu farm in that area, and there was two. Kat, you're so freaking weird. <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, I'm not crazy. I was driving for, like, two hours. Ooh, if you fly country. to Vegas I'm- in the next few weeks, do you want to go to Utah to that big crystal store I found? Yes. Remember yes. that big Let's one go. that like oh my we could do like a road trip. I think it's in like by Zion, which is only like an hour away. Anyway, sorry. Making plans on yes, the stream. We should go. I'm going to write that down too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks God. Okay, so her uh, defense attorney said that she was insane. Um she um was sentenced to life in prison at the age of 19, but she did try to es- escape like escape prison on July 13th of 1913. So that was literally only like a couple of years later she tried to escape. She was caught the same day. Um and even though she tried to escape, she was considered a quote model prisoner. Um and she didn't end up serving very long. What did she serve like 10 years or something and they released her on good behavior? She literally got out at, like my age. Are you she serious? Got out at she is she literally admits to murdering 17 people with an axe and she gets out on good behavior are you kidding me and mind you she went totally mia after that nobody knows where she went nobody knows where she went she left at 29 from jail or prison and that done just gone she disappeared i don't feel right about that no, um... You, you, you murdered no. people by axing their head. You got out on good behavior? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Like, it's just, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. No. No, it's wrong. <sighs> it's okay. definitely wrong. Amy McPherson. Sure. Now, this lady's freaking weird, okay? Yeah. She died at 53, supposedly found with sleeping pills in hand. They think it could have been, like, like, kind of a... Marilyn Monroe sort of vibe like maybe somebody came in and killed her like similar to way Marilyn Monroe was murdered um Mm -hmm. Amy McPherson was one of considered the like the very first celebrity preachers okay so now this is kind of interesting I might be creating some I might be stirring the pot here and like be creating some controversy but who doesn't like some controversy you know what I mean like I really like it sometimes you know by the way my Nick Groff video is at almost a million whoops sorry no wonder he doesn't like me um go watch it oh go watch it just so you know go watch it give me to a million guys on just that one video um Oh my God. So, so Amy bad. McPherson was this female um, female preacher, okay? And they believe, it is rumored, that do you know the big preacher that's on TV from Texas, from Houston? His name is Pastor Joel Austin. Austin? O S T E N. Osborne. Osborne. Oh my God. Can you imagine that? Osborne. Chewing a bat head off stage. Oh my god, like Ozzy Osbourne. Oh my god. Yeah. That I show with Jack. Back. Have you watched it on Travel Channel? It's so bad. Yeah, we just won't even go there. It's not like every every tape I, they play, Ozzy's like, it's bullshit. Like every single thing, <laughs> Ozzy's is bullshit. <laughs> when I come to Vegas, we should do a booze and review and just drink. I think that's just, not just safe. <laughs> I think it's not safe whatsoever. I think it's great. I think it's a great idea. You that know, here's be- the thing. I haven't gotten my show signed yet, yet, period. Just, it's still coming. Just pandemic. Um, oh, I can't say that word. But anyway, I did. Um, <laughs> literally, it's just proof with, with Jack Osborne that money does buy you everything. And, and the problem, the reason I don't have my own show yet is... I don't have Ozzy Osbourne's money, damn it. And if I did, if my father was Ozzy Osbourne, I would have my own show. 
with Ozzy Osbourne as my co-host telling me that every paranormal show and video is bullshit. So that's why I don't have a series for those of you asking, <laughs> like literally. In case anyone is wondering. In case anybody's wondering. Um, so anyway, Joel Osteen, the pastor from Houston, is supposedly um, like followed in the footsteps of this woman named Amy McPherson. So, or yeah, Pherson, yeah. So she was the first celebrity preacher. She was featured in the 1920s. She was blonde. She actually did look very like Marilyn Monroe esque, very pale skin. She wore these beautiful, like almost like Catholicism robes, right? That were like long and like flowing and like these beautiful, like red crosses all over it. And she's like, Yes, I'm beautiful. God sent me here to preach for you. And she essentially like made this huge empire off of, of, people like she was considered this glamorous movie star of a church service because she put on theatrical performances much like how joel onstein does as well where it's this huge big like you know cable network thing and um you know celebrities started getting involved with her and they loved her and they thought she was amazing they thought she was beautiful um she claimed that she could speak in tongues but you're possessed then Okay. You can speak in tongues. You've got Satan in there, and you need a better priest than yourself. Okay? That is my opinion. I don't think you should be getting famous for speaking tongues. By the way, Latin is very hard to freaking understand and speak. So, I'm sorry. You can't just, like, wake up one day and speak Latin. And I saw nothing about her, like, studying it. So, I'm sorry, there was a possession happening there, especially if she's on a theatrical performance on stage doing it. I have some serious concerns, okay? And it's a shame she's gone, because I'd also like to interview her about her demons. Um, I mean, Crystal, I think we should become celebrity preachers, I think. Oh my god. (laughs) People wouldn't be able to get through without laughing. Like, you'd be ridiculous on stage. You could wear, like, a pink rope. You could wear, like, a pink rope with, like, ghosts down the front pink robe i'm like i would like to bring out my demon hunter zach bagans and he walks on stage in like all black with horns with horns oh coming out like i need cat to come out as my sidekick and you're like wearing purple no you're like a green witch and you're just like floating out on the stage with like gl- green smoke okay anyway we could plan this i'm just saying um let's do it let's make these theories so oh she also claims she could cure the blind Me too. Me too. Same. Yeah. One hundred percent. Hey, welcome to the club. Nice. <sighs> but they say she was groundbreaking. Um, she was evangel. What is that? What's that word called? Evangel. Evangelized. Oh, evangelical. I can't say that word. I can't say aluminum either. And aluminum. <laughs> I love um, it. She also had a okay, radio like- broadcast that she did as well, and people found her personality very charming. Um, and she was criticized for loving her, her celebrity status too much. And she would um, basically backpedal saying, like, no, I'm doing this for Jesus and for God. And it has nothing to do with my celebrity status and all of the millions mm-hmm. of dollars I'm raking in. Um, she did end up being fined. Uh, like, she went to Mexico. And this was in 1926. She claimed that she had been abducted or, like, kidnapped and nobody could find her. She ended up getting found, and it was found out that she she'd hoaxed the like kidnapping. She hoaxed her own kidnapping. Who does that? Which to me says uh, that like her whole scheme was all bullshit. You know what I mean? Like I'm sorry, but if you're of so God and we- and you're worshiping God, you're not gonna hoax a disappearance. Yeah, I mean, her life was just so horrible being famous, so she just had to fake Yeah, why did, Why do you hoax it? Where are, are you going? Life? Where are you going? It's just a problem. You have it's a lot of a money. Problem. You're famous. You're making money in the name of God. Why are you going to make yourself disappear, boo? What happened? What happened in your childhood that you have so much trauma and shadow work you need to work on that you had to go to Mexico? So anyway, <laughs> they found her and they brought her back in 1944 and she was arrested (laughs) like it's so bad like it's embarrassing anyway well 
And then she died in a hotel room. And so. then she died like Marilyn Monroe. I think people were just done with her, and they were like, just make it look like Marilyn. We're just done. We're just done. Like, get rid of her. Yeah, it is. It's always with the sleeping pills. That is weird. Yeah, it is. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Pat's like, okay, I'm going down a dark hole on that. I'm going to research that one next. I'm going to write that one down, too. Oh my Excuse gosh. me. <laughs> So I think we should do one more because um, we have a lot. Let's do the last one. What do you want to do? The very last one? Yeah. Messed up one. Oh, the me- cat. This is Cat's favorite female serial killer. Okay. I know. I got problems. All right. She only killed three people. Though, so yeah, but I mean, one of them was not right, Not man. 40. One of them's no, not right. No. I'm going to let you start this one off. Me? Yeah, Sylvia Merez okay. Moreno. Sylvia Merez Moreno mm-hmm. uh, was a serial killer um, in uh, Nakozari, Mexico. Mm-hmm. And she was the co leader of this really violent cult called La Santa Muerte, which is the Saint of Death, uh, located in her hometown of Mexico. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the saint or the deity of this cult was um depicted as like a grim reaper icon um do you think they were like summoning demons in probably yeah probably yeah probably um and it it was a goddess that was depicted as a skeleton usually wearing a loose robe and carrying like a scythe kind of like a grim reaper yeah i don't think that that would be a goddess that's just a little two cents on my part like you know (laughs) i mean (laughs) <laughs> to each their own. Jesus. To each their own. <laughs> I don't judge. So I don't judge. But maybe I do a lot, though. Um, so the icon also gets the nickname of Kalikita, which is uh, also called Skinny Girl, or uh, Joseda, which is Bony Lady, uh, which is mood, literal mood. Um, she, let's see here. The murders okay. took place from 2009 to 2012. She was. Yeah. She did end up getting arrested for it in March of 2012. Is she still alive? Yeah, she is. I think actually. Probably in yep. like prison no, or something. No. No. No death date was listed. Okay. No death date was listed online. Um. So she was the co-leader of this really violent cult, as I said before, and they made human sacrifices to appease the gods. So again, another cult where it's like you got to kill people for the gods, right? <clears throat> Here's where it gets messed up. Here's another explicit warning if you're weird about this stuff. Um, So the first victim was a woman named Cleo Tilde, who was a 55-year-old friend of hers. Um, And they also killed two children, one of which uh, was the woman's own grandson. See, what? And they beheaded him. What? Yeah. How do you behead your own grandson? Come on, man. Yeah, it's wrong. Don't do that. Don't, don't <laughs> Jesus, cat. Okay, just not, don't do that. It's really bad business. Don't, it's like not it's good. It's just mind blowing that this is even a conversation right now. To be totally honest with you, um, <sighs> seems pretty normal to not do that. But in case we need to put the disclaimer here, <sighs> putting it out there. Don't be at people. How could you please. even consider killing your own lineage? Uh, I don't know. That is some psychology I don't want to know. I don't want to know that. Mm. I'll put you that on that case there, Crystal. No. Chat with them, no. So they buried the bodies outside of the city, and um, the, they were found later on at the altar site um, in a small mining community about 70 miles south of Arizona. Oh, Douglas, Arizona. Um, really? I'm going to look that up really quick. Go ahead, keep going. Do it. So here's where it gets explicit, just as a warning. Um, this was off of the report, uh, the, the police like incident report of, of what had happened. The victim's throats and wrists had been slit, and their blood was smeared across an altar dedicated to Santa Muerte. Investigators say that um, Mraz and her family believe that these blood sacrifices would bring them riches. Wow. Um, when, and when they arrived at the scene, there was like blood smeared like, like all down the deity that they built on top of the altar. It was really messed up. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Okay, so Investigation it says it's about oh, 70 miles south of Douglas, Arizona. So just everybody knows. Douglas, I, I'm familiar with Arizona since I live in Vegas. I, I go to Phoenix a lot just because it's fun. I like there's there's some bomb ass sandwiches shops in Phoenix. Okay, just for the record. Um but Douglas is literally on the border, so it must have just happened just past the border of Douglas, Arizona. Yeah, messed up. It's messed up. 
Go ahead. Oh, God. Um, oh, this is really creepy. I said, like, imp passed again my wrist. So that was creepy. Um, so, imp investigation after the um, family of the 10 year old um, Jesus Martinez um, reported him missing early in that month. Um, so they said that uh, one of the cult leaders said that they, the murders took place at a ritual during the night, um, lit by candles. Yeah. There was a literal quote, like, like one of the members of this cult said, they sliced open the victim's veins while they were still alive, and then waited them for them to bleed to death to collect the blood in a container, and then they beheaded them. So they're, you, they're doing rituals again. Yeah. Which is crazy because you're talking about Mexico, which is probably predominantly Catholic, right? Like Catholicism. Why? What to you... an extent. No. Okay. We just talked about this before too. What is this in related to like Day of the Dead? Because you felt like it might be slightly like they took Day of the Dead to like a different, like a dark turn. Like they took it so, to an extreme level. Ta so talk about what Day of the because you you support this in your heritage. You you celebrate this in your heritage because Cat is Mexican. So you mm -hmm. talk about what Day of the Dead. I love Day of the Dead by the way. Talk about what Day of the Dead is and Me what too. they have reinterpreted as in this cult. Yeah, so Day of the Dead, which happens around, um, you know, time of Halloween, uh, is Dia de los Muertos, and I, I celebrated it a lot with my uh, Hispanic side of the family, and it was always a very full uh, ceremony, a very exciting and happy ceremony, because they wanted to commemorate the dead of an their ancestors, mm -hmm. and those passed on, and that was the day to communicate with them and bake their favorite food, leave them by their grave site. Um, Grave, grave sites um, all over the place in, in Mexico would be lit up. Mm -hmm. It would just be bright lights at night. And it was just so heartwarming. And people would be dancing by the tombs. And it was very normal because death death was never is never a scary thing for um, those that practice Dia de los Muertos. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a joyous thing because they're always with you. And um, that's just the day that you get to celebrate them mm -hmm. and um, what they've done for the family or what they did for the family. And, and they feel welcome. So, you know, that's the context of the Day of the Dead. Um, and they, like, really took it and flipped it, this cult, for, <laughs> like, a, like, a lot, where they took it from, you know, happy and food and celebration and dance to blood and sacrifices. And, and I would assume, that, you know, there's extremists everywhere in anything we do. Mm -hmm. um, I would assume that they didn't feel like that was enough to to commemorate their ancestors. Right. So I would almost think back to like, I don't know why I thought about like the Vikings, Viking era, where they would like sacrifice people and animals and things like that for the gods. Mm -hmm. um, and that was like really honorable. So in their brains, these people in Mexico that were doing this cult beheading people, um, they probably thought that that was their way of commemorating their ancestors and their dead. Well, um, no, which isn't is just that really messed up. What was the what's the um, it starts with an M? The Mayan tombs, they were known on the Mayan side, which is also in Mexico, for doing human sacrifices. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I mean, who knows? Maybe they interpreted that ancient language and they were using that as well. Because the Mayans yeah, would literally have the stone sacrifice tables where you bleed out and, like, the blood goes down through the weird crevices and creates, like, a, a pretty river ugh, of blood. Um, we have one of those tables here in New Hampshire. That's where, isn't that where, like, the UFO sightings have been and all that stuff? Yeah, and there's a like a literally a, a blood sacrificial table um, that is like a carved stone that has um, like incisions in, in the stone for the blood to go out. And right. there's literally like a spout at the end of it. And no one really knows what it was used for. Um, but they actually hold a lot of rituals and like seances in that area and it's allowed hmm. by druids, by, you know, pagan, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, they do allow them to come and use that sacrificial table. and. Actually, the day I went to go visit it, they had police there um, because something had happened with it. Gee, with I wonder what happened. Somebody um, practiced another sacrifice. Great. Oh, God. Yeah, it was messed up. So I just don't get you know, earthlings, you know? Like, I just don't get mortals. And the reason I don't get mortals is... I believe in reincarnation. I believe we've reincarnated. I don't think any of us are from this planet. I don't really hmm. think there is one religion or one god per se that 
is a hierarchy over another. I just think there is. And I don't understand why people come here to torture things and themselves and each other. I don't get, I don't get mortals. I don't understand mortals. I just, it, it makes no sense to me. I, do, do you really, like, no matter what religion you believe in, no matter how ancient, ancient it is, what in your right mind thinks that you should be, you have the right to take somebody else's life? No god of mine I would be, you know, worshipping in order to give a sacrifice to them. That's no god of mine, period. I don't care if it's mm-hmm. Christianity or any of the above. Because even, like you say, there's extremists no matter what. So there's all, all parts of life, all walks of life and religion have had extremists yeah. with, with sacrifices. Doesn't matter. doesn't have to just be witchcraft or hoodoo or voodoo. So it's just, it's really strange to me how this planet works. Yeah. I sound like it's I'm so up. not from here, but there are days I'm just like, I am not from here, like, at all. Like, yeah. literally. You no, know, it's backwards. It's mm-hmm. very backwards, you know? Mm-hmm. And, you know, what is wrong is right, and what is right is wrong. It's, it's just very bizarre. Mm-hmm. And um, I 100% still stand by your theory that the life we're living now is hell. Oh, well, I don't think we're I in hell that. per se. I just no, think, I don't like, know what else, like, yeah, I mean, if, you, like, people are like, oh, my God, I'm, I have to do good, and I have to, which I actually talk about my theory of hell in my book that's coming out, because I've been Hi. given messages from Derek, who's my, per, you know, my friend that committed suicide, who has not crossed over yet, but I don't think we're in hell, I just don't understand why people are so afraid of hell, when anything that could happen in hell also goes on here is my theory you know what i mean like people Mm -hmm. torture each other here every day like to very violent capacities what makes you afraid of another realm when we already live in one that's similar you know what i mean like stop letting religion make you afraid um and just stop letting scripture such as one of the 180 versions of the bible make you afraid of some realm that in my opinion doesn't exist you know what I mean? So it's just, it, it is, it's just, especially when you do have these sacrificial altars that are already here, like hell has already happened here. Like we've, we see it every day on the news for God's sake. Oh. So I don't know. It's Mass. interesting. Mass. It's really interesting. It is. Well, anything else you want to add to this? Yeah. Oh, this was a good stream. I, oh. I almost feel like we should do a part two with the other ones. Yeah. Because there's a, there's a lot more that are just really interesting. You can kind of, like, dig up, oh, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's more. There's this, more. this was great. Maybe we should do, like, a great. serial killer stream, too, for women. Yes. I agree. That would be a good one. I agree. I mean, yeah. I've talked about a few. Poor, poor Dorothy Puente. Bless her heart. She was just a hot mess, you know? Oh my god. <laughs> god i mean she had a good idea murder people and take their social security checks you know like but you know you're gonna get caught eventually boo boo i just, with Dor- dorothea puente it shocks me that a little lady of her stature because she was little she was petite she didn't weigh much and i mean her age also comes into a factor for her to murder people and drag their bodies to her death garden. How in the godsend did she do that? Like, Jesus her Lord. Death garden. That's what I need. Yeah, me too. Kidding. I want one of those, but not with bodies, with like black flowers. You know what I mean? <laughs> not with bodies. No, no not bodies. Ew, the bone. smell. No. 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 <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you for um, spending Friday night with us. Kat will be in Vegas hopefully in another couple of weeks. Um, we'll we'll do some. She'll probably end up like not going home and like <laughs> moving in for like six months. <coughs> um, we're gonna do some live streams while sh- while she's here. Excuse me. And um, we're also gonna do. I think we're gonna do a couple road trips, aren't we? We talked about that. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Yeah, we're talking, yeah. not not in public. We're going to still be social distancing, like nothing like that. But we're thinking about, there's a couple of really amazing gemstone rock um, places that we found on TikTok that are in, um, Utah is known for a lot of mining and they have amazing, beautiful gemstones. We found a couple of stores that are literally just a couple hours away 
So we will probably live stream that or like film it or whatever, film the road trips. We want to do that. Um, I'm wanting to go, one of my favorite mall. there's a really awesome mall that's in Phoenix and I've just, quarantine's got me. Like I haven't really done anything. I've been staying at home. So we might take a trip one night, go to Jerome and film something in Jerome. And then we might, yeah. um, and then I think I want to go to Arizona, um, what is it called, Phoenix. There's a mall there that I love. I think it's in Mesa. And also Mr. Good Sense. I'm going to go eat some some sub sandwiches because those are delicious. Yes. And then we'll, thank you, sub. Laura, for the bits. We appreciate you. And then um, we're also talking about going to L.A. for a couple days. Um my website is is like getting there kids okay also i wanted to announce that if you're wanting some ghost girl merch um you can find it on ghostgirlglam.com can you type that in for me cat www.ghostgirlglam.com i have my um shirts that are like the ggd logo ghost girl diaries logo on my website a bunch of you guys have already bought them because they're on my website i'm also getting ready to upload some merchandise um i have literally thousands of pieces of gemstones and jewelry that i'm getting ready to upload onto my website um but i'm also going to la because i'm thinking about eventually not only finishing the cosmetics line but i would like to start a clothing line at some point um witchy vibes so kat is wanting to go with me um to la to look at some vendors which i'm kind of excited about and so, yeah, that's what we've been doing. And um, Kat's got her crochet in. Somebody knitted Bertie Sanders. Oh, my gosh. I sent that picture to Crystal earlier. I Someone already sent me the pattern. I'm Are you going to do it? Oh, my gosh. How funny. I'm going to do it. Oh, my yeah. gosh. He it's became really an overnight like sensation. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. It's I'm so obsessed. Good. The memes are fire. Oh All right. I just have to say. It, it's so good. It's so creative. There was one, um, I posted a couple to my, my Facebook channel. There was one where he's sitting, like, Bernie is sitting in, like, the chair, and he's like, I'm guarding my crystals during the moon. Like, it was so funny. Like, there was some really good ones. Elvira posted a couple on her social media, too. So, yeah. They make- had him in the uh, sorting hat as well, mm-hmm. Harry Potter. Like, yes. Getting the sorting hat put on his head. Mm-hmm. They actually had some with uh, Blink-182 and like Newfound Glory I album didn't covers. see that. Oh my god. And they were, like put him in there. It was so funny. It was so good. Sorry. It was so funny. I hope you guys have an amazing, amazing weekend. This stream will be uploaded as a YouTube video and it will be uploaded as a podcast so you'll be able to catch it there. Hopefully tonight or tomorrow it should be live on all major streaming services such as iTunes, Spotify, etc. Um, make sure you're following us on all social media platforms. Next week, I will have Elfie N. And Elfie will be um, chatting with me about HP Lovecraft because it's his birthday and the Necronomicon. So um, we're going to kind of dissect this book because a lot of people think this is like a satanic book of like spells and worship and all that stuff. So that's going to be a really good stream. And then next month we have some really good ones that are planned and up and coming as well. So make sure you're following us on all major um, social media platforms. Look for Ghost Girl Diaries. Also search Crystal Leandra and search Cat Cormier. Um, what else, Cat? Any other announcements you want to make? No, none. Life's well. been pretty good and I'll be in Vegas you know, tomorrow. <laughs> I'll Just be in kidding. Vegas tomorrow. Everybody stay <laughs> safe. See you tomorrow. Um, and uh, as always, we will catch you guys next time. Bye, guys. Take care. Bye.